So recently I was really thinking about the Silence of the Lambs and the trilogy that it's part of, which also consists of Red Dragon and of Hann Hannibal. Now I've read all three books and I do enjoy all of the books. Thomas Harris, really good author, but there's just something I don't get with the whole trilogy um, when you bring it all together. Um, obviously the chronological order, eh, eh. but also my biggest part is I love Red Dragon and I love Silence of the Lambs, but I don't like, I don't love, I don't feel anything about Hannibal. Now Hannibal is stylistically, I feel, really over the top compared to the other two movies. The other two are really minimalist and I get that it's a movie where it's everyone travels a lot, there's different locations, there's a lot of um, things in different European cities. And it's a really sweeping kind of story, but I don't think it translated it to the screen well, especially for people who really love Silence of the Lambs. It was a different type of performance for Anthony Hopkins, and I don't really think that he could live up to Silence of the Lambs. Um, and the Silence of the Lambs performance, um, he is really, really confined in his roles. He's behind the bars or, you know, not out, out in the public, but not really. Um, it's just more or less a psychological profile of Lecter that you get from Hopkins' performance. I feel like with him walking around more in Hannibal and just um, being like a member of society, the whole difference of the roles we see, you don't really get this psychological portrait or this intense and very intimate thing in between all of the scenes with him, generally involving solely him and Clarice. Obviously there's the famous scene with the governor and when he escapes, but the one-on-one -on -one with Clarice, person to person, is awesome. Additionally, you change the the actress playing Clarice, and I don't really think that's a great choice. First off, Julianne Moore, I love her. I think she's an awesome actress. I have a just a slight girl crush on her, but Julianne Moore was very, very, very feminine compared to Jodie Foster's really ragged, um, coming up from the low class, lower class. Clary Starling. Um, when you look at the two together, it's not really this great um, evolution. It seems really disjointed. It's just way too feminine for what you get from Clary Starling during the Silence of the Lambs movie. Additionally, Jodie Foster has a great mind. For those of you who don't know, she's been directing a lot of films recently, notably, or not so notably, The Beaver with Mel Gibson completely odd concept and you're using kind of like the most dated hated actor but you're, he, she tries cool concepts she's been in front of and behind the camera since she was young girl and suntan lotion ads and she really gets the business she refused to be in this movie she said it was overkill it wasn't really a good movie and it was really Scott trying to make money off of the franchise which let's face it pretty much the truth it was like, oh, yay, we can do this and make money. We can pay Anthony Hopkins a good buck. He'll come back over the pond and he'll play in this movie. But Jodie Foster had the integrity to say no to this movie, which is overkill. And I think she was right to say no to it. But I also think that if you don't have the two biggest stars from one of the best movies ever made, and arguably the best thriller, horror, suspense movie ever made, you ain't gonna make a good movie. It's just like, uh, you can replace the husband and I love Lucy, obviously, because no one cares about him. It's all about Lucy. But those two actors together in that room made that awesome movie and they had really great chemistry. And when you're throwing in a different actress, it doesn't really work. Now, Red Dragon I do like because you're not really dealing with a same basic kind of plot line in between Clarice and Hannibal Lecter, so it's a lot easier to do with just Anthony Hopkins and then have Ed Norton come in and do a fine performance and have Ray Fiennes come in and steal the day. Ray Fiennes is an actor 
as a lot of people will find, I don't really like a lot of the big name actors who are always garnering awards. Except for Daniel Day-Lewis. I just, I don't feel most of those actors. But Ray Fiennes, for me, he's the Oscars know his name, the Golden Globes know his name, but he's not a household name. When honestly, he's in, in some of the greatest works of our time. Schindler's List in this movie, and then he has this really awesome role as Voldemort. Like, I freaking love this guy. And he was in The English Patient. Oh, such a tearjerker. He does a really fine job as the villain in Red Dragon, and the psychological play between Ed Norton and him is really awesome. One thing I would like to throw out there to the Hollywood world is I want to watch Edward Norton and Christian Bale have a psychological battle in some type of movie. That's the only way Red Dragon could be yet better, is if you take out Ray Fiennes and you throw Christian Bale in the role. Still, Ray Fiennes does a great job. You have Anthony Hopkins does a pretty good job. He, I think he's better this time around as Lecter in Red Dragon than he is by far in Hannibal. So I guess basically what I'm trying to say is Hannibal is too sweeping for the movie set, the series that it's in. Red Dragon is more faithful to that original Science of the Lambs, but I would really like to have seen in Hannibal a little bit more integrity in filming it or not filming it at all since you don't have Jodie Foster. Like even if you don't like Clarice, Clarice Starling, she did a great job in the role. So thanks for watching my video and my next video that I want to post is the smartest romantic comedies because that is something that we need to delve into because some of them are so dumb and I like the smart ones so thanks.